to the Uncommon Transformation television series. Flooding has over the years been one of the major challenges facing major cities, particularly those situated quite close to rivers. Akwaibum State, for example, is a littoral state with most of its communities bounded by big rivers, rivulets and large expanses of water emptying into the Atlantic Ocean. Beyond this is the fact that the state lies on a plateau with huge ravines in areas like Itam in its local government area, Uyo, the state capital, Oron and Ibionibum. The flat, basin-like nature of land makes it difficult for rainwater to ease out after every rainfall, leading to massive flooding which for several years the residents have had to cope with. Properties worth several millions of naira were lost in the process, farmlands were washed away, while the town campus of the University of Uyo, situated in the heart of the state capital, is on the verge of being submerged following huge ravines which yearly threaten it. The Uyo is a flat land, it's a table land. And then the greatest problem in the south south here is flood. Part of what we did, there's a place that we did three major flyovers completed. I'm not talking about starting. Now, that road that we dualized, that area was permanently flooded. That area was permanently flooded. And it was so bad. So what we did was to, it was not going to be easy to just dig gutters. So we went and brought a system they called pipe jacking system of drainage control. In the past, living in some parts of Uyo during rainy season was always a nightmare. In fact, for first-time visitors to Uyo after a downpour, it was akin to driving into a river. The situation was so bad that many houses in the flood-prone areas were submerged. The residents, out of frustration, relocated to other areas, while those that could not afford remained trapped in their houses for days. The popular Ita market located in the area was fast losing its relevance as sellers were daily closing shop. Traders from neighboring states of Abia, Cross River, Enugu and Rivers looked for alternative markets to do business. Commissioner for Works, Mr. Don Etam, speaks. The drainage infrastructure in Uyo um, has been very bad. Bad because, do not forget, the way the city has grown, the infrastructure did not grow that way. Uyo had earlier been conceptualized as a local government headquarters, and therefore the nature of drains built um, and the span of development was not as far-reaching as it is today. Residents of flood-prone areas recount their sad experiences. Flood situation, I'm as idiot to I don't know how to fare for the farm. Me jang mo gan me ba me before the creation of state. So so do graduate, graduate. I do get ninety two. Bakuri nam one small quarter here. Anya yong so na me tukit. Go ma hage ma the the development ke state. Adi nam the volume of the water. Adi kuno kan na hage do. The flood or the be be na free wush yong get this area. So friend, you need to strand it. But it's a me. You get in a boy, man. So move me, riba, aba. The young man has a fun on your go song. Even though it's in town, the young Adam. Want to find where they tell me that the guy is on the phone. Whereas at now, guess who is riba, me? So I make it a tag come by the young. A tag to get money, get the ticket. I make it song. Oh, carrying your son, ne? Move on, don't you song more? Come back, come back, you pick it up, pick Right from 1992, this Uran Street had suffered from a lot of uh, you know, flood attacks. I had a poultry farm at number 14 Uran Street. It was also destroyed. My poultry of about 1,500 beds was gone in one day. And we are very happy. We've observed the big gutters, the big tunnels created in the town to take on the menace of erosion. We appreciate him and we commend him and we say he should 
continue to help us because whatever he does, he has left his name in the sands of time. For instance, there's a church somewhere there. There was a time the flood get up to the roof. The roof. I'm talking about the roof. Imagine if people were worshipping in it, how the situation would have been like. Maybe they would have think it's a small thing. Maybe they would carry their babies on their hand without knowing that the war was coming. It was like the case of Noah in the Bible. But thank God they didn't lose their life. Just somewhere, some houses away from here. But thank God for our God-fearing government that knows the heart of the people. Uh, he came in between and started planning for this. And I'm very, very sure that at the end of this drainage, it will favor everybody. The rain that was flooding, it, it, um, it has destroyed many of, our, um, many of our property. Even my document, my sister's document, my shoe, my television, all the, my in, in electronic, it, the rain has destroyed. The flood was very, very bad. Even this compound, some tenants are, some tenants are living in this compound because of the flood, they are packed out. An environmentalist, Dr. Valentine Attar, gives explanation as to why cities like you are often flooded whenever it rains. It takes me to man and environment. And when I say man here, the man can do a lot to the destruction or the flooding in you more than the natural aspect of heavy rainfall. But then uh, with the heavy rainfall, the other the topographical factors like the flood plain, which you belongs that increases the volume of flood that ends up to destroy from what would have been a manageable erosion of flood problem to such that as consider the nuisance I mean it's to people itself. The situation persisted and simply appeared to defy every solution despite huge budgetary provisions made by successive administrations to curb the problem of erosion and flooding in the state. Not unmindful of the popular saying that the best definition of insanity is to continue to do the same thing the same way and expect a different result. Governor Goswil Obotokpabio decided to take the bull by the horn and confront the problem of flooding in the capital city once and for all. In order to optimize the construction of drains to check flooding, two different construction designs were analyzed, namely the open construction, which as the name implies, open excavation of the soil, which over the years have been tried without much of a success. Adopting this design would have required the construction of temporary road along sheets pile wall and permanent service roads on both sides of the cascade, necessary in terms of maintenance accessibility. This would have had strong impact on the environment. The risk of erosion would have been very high, while construction progress would have been limited in the rainy season and the compensation payable to owners of structures along the causeway would have been really high, as many structures would have to be pulled down in the course of construction. Further to the aforementioned was the fact that in the open drainage system, the state government would also have had to contend with the filth that would have been thrown into it by the people from time to time, while in effect it was discovered that runoff water would not have been able to flow well and a trench of about 40 meters needed to be dug to effectively discharge the flood water. A better alternative was therefore considered which is the pipe jacking system. 
features which include closed construction with concrete pipes measuring 2.0 meters in diameter, construction method independence from road works, less environmental impact, less compensation in high density areas and has gravity flow pipe with stealing basin at the end. For you to appreciate the system, you need to see the video of how that thing was done. It's just the same way that Eurostar was done. Now, from one central reservoir, pipes as gigantic as something you can ride a bike through. Even if you walk through, he walks through, you see have a lot of space. Are going around the town, 3.7 kilometers from one house to the, you know, crossing people's houses and then going 40 feet below houses. And then immediately after the rain, two minutes after the rain, you will see a single water. Then you go to the discharge end that takes it through into a stream. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, and then, you know, if it's in the rain, luckily the vice president commissioned it in the rain. The force of water that is coming out, you can hear it one mile away when the water is coming. And, you, you know, at the end of the day, you put in a small turbine and you, you regulate the force. It can produce electricity for the immediate environment where there is need for that. So these are innovations that you will not see anywhere else. Area manager of Julius Beja PLC, the construction giants that handled the project, engineer Sven Madler, explains the processes involved. For this pipe checking method, you have to just construct as first manholes. In this case, we constructed four manholes. As you can see here, you know, we drove piles, both piles, but four spots. After driving this board piles, concrete piles, yeah, you excavate the manhole and then you bring in this uh, drilling machine, yeah, the kind of drilling machine, and then you start to drill into the soil yeah, and then while you're drilling in the same time you push these concrete pipes yeah, into the soil. So this means you open up only four spots for the manholes yeah, and then between these manholes you push uh, your concrete pipes one after the other into the soil. And while you are pushing the concrete pipes you excavate uh, the, the soil inside the concrete pipe and bring it out through the manhole. So through this uh, method yeah, you don't have to do demolition and you, don't, you avoid this huge earthworks. Imagine 2.3 kilometers drain in a depth of up to 40 meters. We were talking about thousands of cubic of uh, laterite, which we would have to cut away in the normal method. Like this, we just uh, cut away the, the, the soil, yeah, which was before uh, in the alignment of this pipe, which is not much. So this means you avoid demolition, you avoid uh, massive earthworks, yeah, uh, and of course you are much more faster with this. Yeah. With this system, we were able to walk in the dry season and in the rainy season. With the other system, we could only walk in the dry season. Akwaibum State Commissioner for Works, Mr. Don Etam, and the Special Assistant to the Governor on Projects Monitoring, Engineer Ekbu Roberts, speak further on the project. The pipe jacking uh, drainage system um, was first muted as the solution to the drainage problem um, to save the dualized road coming from uh, Ekmitam all the way down to um, a back road. It's um, a system that is hydraulic driven and works according to the principle of the Euro tunnel. Um, it's a system where as you stay on top, you don't know what is happening down, down below. I know the um, familiar problem of you. Uyo is located in a table land that is in a plateau and it makes you know the usual construction of drainage very difficult. The difference between the entry points and the outfall here is about 40 meters and even then how can you dig a drainage, how can you construct a drainage of the 40 meters depth is absolutely impossible. The beauty of the underground drainage or pipe jacking system is that the residents are not even aware that such massive construction is going on around them, since the process does not have any effect on their houses nor their farmlands. 
Under the pipe jacking method, water is channeled into well lubricated huge pipelines buried under the ground, passing through the discharge drains. The suspension for lubrication reduces friction between pipes and the surrounding ground and also supports the gap between pipes and ground in order to avoid or minimize settlements. The flutes for the support are long-lasting and able to resist chemical and mechanical attacks. The Julius Beja area manager further explained that more flood control works are ongoing simultaneously in various parts of the capital city and its environs. For instance, the Brook Street Shore Protection Project had been completed and is a beauty to behold. The project was designed to check the huge ravine that was fast eating into the Brook Street axis of the metropolis with farmlands at the defunct Nitel complex seriously at the risk of being submerged. The Oran Street Flood Control Works is nearing completion. The excavation had been completed and the drains are being covered. According to the residents, the project is a totally welcome development as it has the erased sad memories of several years where they lost properties worth millions of naira to the menace of flooding. The huge investment on the flood control works being undertaken by the state government is to prevent affected areas from being submerged as well as protect the mega projects like the concentric flyovers and roads projects from being washed away. But one thing that is very clear from the airport now is that the government of Akwaibom State is focused. One thing again that I will note is that the projects I have seen are not just projects, but of very high quality. The governor is not just playing politics with projects, but it's so clearly that he's committed to changing things. Uh, one of the projects that was quite interesting to me is the drainage system. I think this is the first time I have seen that kind of a drainage system. And I, I believe it's must be one of the first in the whole continent of Africa. I can say that the growth of Aquaibum in this couple of years past is quite significant. That Nigeria's president, represented by Vice President Nemadi Sambo, defied the torrential rains to commission this unique project underscores the workability of the pipe jacking drainage system. development you are seeing here in Aquaibomse, if the others all over the country will follow suit and make development, there will be peace in this country. As far as the other visits, visitations we've done, it's very impressive to see that funds have been put to use for the benefit of the people of, the, of your uh, state. And I know education being the most important thing in any modern society, you seem to have invested a lot in that direction, which is very laudable. So many things have happened since the last time I was here, and I'm very, very delighted that the governor here has done excellently. I see the infrastructure, I see the, some of the facilities, I see the investments uh, in, uh, in education. I feel the people feeling the, the health sector also have been improved. You, you just see transformation. And uh, you can feel it among the people because uh, the people are really happy because they see things being done. It is important that we, we have a reference point 
Akwai Bong certainly stands as a, a role model, a source of inspiration to other states. So it would be nice if the Minister President can advise other governors to visit Akwai Bong on a two days retreat during which the governor himself will, will have time to take them around and then see what is happening here. I think it will serve as a, a, a great source of inspiration to them. That is not necessarily the, the amount of money that you get from the Federation account, but the, the vision, the mission, the determination to apply the resources judiciously. So it is important that other states see a Bible as a model state. Performing and bringing out new things, new ideas, new development, new innovations, not only in Akwai Bond State, but within the rank and file of PDP. <laughs> I have come as the chairman of the party that produced him, and we are very proud of him, to do one thing that we usually do with him. They are very rare. If we count one, one two, three, maybe he will have number two and probably number three. There are not many in PDP. When situations come, we consult them. God's will Akwabio is not just a governor of Akwabion State. I think it's the Messiah that you could deserve. Yes. That's the only way you can describe him and his work. Yes. It's only a Messiah that can do that kind of thing, not a governor. Akwabion took his own responsibilities serious under a responsible and responsive governor and the rest is history. So we hope it will be in the lifetime of the rest of us that Nigeria can begin to be like a people. It's just one of the many firsts that Governor Akwaibu has called since he assumed the leadership of Akwaibu State. This is one project where the governor made up his mind and buried billions of naira under the earth to save Uyo from being submerged or from extinction. So we are glad to see what is happening here. It's revolutionary, so to speak, because it has not happened anywhere. I have never seen it anywhere. Every Nigerian, every serious Nigerian, every person who has visited that project in one way or the other had had to commend His Excellency, the governor of Okwaibom State, for such initiative. It is one of the scientific wonders of the modern age, and we are very, very happy that it's happening in Akwaibom State. The brain behind, you know, the reasoning behind it, and the passion that His Excellency has, you know, you won't have any other reason not to say this really on common transmission because people used to avoid you, you know, during rainy season. People would not really come to you, you know. So it's important that uh, people realize, and we have uh, pictures of all of the the degradation or even the ponds that we used to have on our, high road, on our highways uh, not too long ago, 2007, and today, 2012, all of those things have disappeared. That's why we call it on a common transformation. His commitment to making the state a better place has become a benchmark for administrative excellence. And this has been noticed by people across the globe. Um, like uh, His Excellency would also say from time to time, can government work? He has answered that question eloquently, that government can work in Nigeria. Governor Akpabio has continually received kudos for mustering this political will to execute mega projects. This turnkey initiative underscores the governor's drive towards a holistic development of infrastructure in the state, as well as his vision of moving Uyo from its old rural status to an urban city with modern amenities.
This is Akwaibu, the land of uncommon transformation. 